In this short video, I'll show you how to create a simple Gantt chart in Microsoft Excel using a blank worksheet. You'll need to use the work breakdown structure as a basis for your Gantt chart. This is just a quick overview and I have produced a longer step-by-step -step video with screen share. Once you have Excel open and you've saved the file, you want to create these columns. The first is the work breakdown structure coding. The second is a description of the task or the work package or the deliverable. You'll want the start date and end date, a duration for each deliverable work package or task, a predecessor column, resources. You might want percent complete to use this as a tracking tool later, and then your timeline. I've gone for something really simple here, just week one, week two, week three, but you could have these as dates or show seven days a week or months or whatever your timeline is. I've just kept this super simple for us today. Uh, it's a good idea also to bold that row just so it stands out a little bit more. So in order to build your Gantt chart, you need to follow a particular order. So in step one, you complete columns A and B, which is the work breakdown structure coding and the description. So you only do columns A and B, then you go to column E and do the durations and do all of the durations and then go to the predecessor column and do all of the predecessors. Once you have the duration and predecessor done, you can then go to the start date and end date. It's a lot simpler. We are using a work breakdown structure as the basis for the Gantt chart. You should always do that. So I'm going to enter some data and we're going to see how it works. So here's my work breakdown structure, or at least part of it. And the overall project is a house renovation. So that's coded as one. The first deliverable is to update the kitchen. And down here, the second deliverable is to, is to update the main bathroom. So following the updating of the kitchen, there's a few work packages here. Design, renovate, and then do the finishing tasks. And in my Gantt chart, I've broken these down a little bit further to show that to design a kitchen, I'll do some consultation. I'll actually do the proper design or blueprint or layouts. And then I'll do finalization activities, sign contracts or whatever needs to be done. For renovating, I'll demolish the existing kitchen and remove everything. And then that will be ready so that I can install the new kitchen. And there might be some tasks in there like organizing contractors, purchasing the appliances, all those sort of subtasks that might go with installing. After all the installs done, then I'm going to test and inspect everything and clean the site up afterwards to make sure everything's spick and span. So the first step I've done here is to complete all of column A and B. And then I can go to duration, column E. So you may have durations given to you, otherwise you'll need to estimate them. I've prepared some already for us. And here are my durations. So I'm saying that I'll take two weeks to do consultation, two weeks to do the design, one week to finalize. I'll need a week to demolish, a week to install. I've assumed it's a small kitchen. Then a week to do all the testing and inspecting. And then finally a week to clean everything up. What you'll notice here is I'm working only from the bottom level, not from those top deliverable or work package levels at this point. Once I have these in, I can start thinking about the predecessors or dependencies. And I go through each of these lower level tasks and ask if it can be done on the first day or if it's dependent on anything. So with kitchen consultation, it's not dependent on anything. There's no predecessor. Designing the kitchen though, I need to do the consultation first to inform my design and make sure it's good. So there's a dependency here on 1.1.1.1. And the same here, I can't finalize the kitchen until I've got the completed designs done. So that's 1.1.1.2. So here we're showing in the predecessor column that there are some relationships. And the same here, I can't demolish until I've finalized. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it. And down we go. I'm just going to format that in. Now, for installing the new kitchen, I actually have two dependencies here. So the first dependency is I can't install the new kitchen without having a finalized design that can be installed. 
and I also can't install the new kitchen before I've demolished and removed the old one. It's impossible. So there's actually two predecessors to that activity uh, and these ones are fairly straightforward. I can't test and inspect until the install's finished and I can't do a clean up until all the testing, inspecting and fixing up's finished as well. Sometimes you'll decide that two things should be starting at the same time, have a start to start relationship or finishing at the same time, have a finish to finish relationship, but I've kept this very simple here. So once we have E and F completed, it's really easy to do start date, end date. And once again, we start only at this lower level because it's gonna roll up to the top. So kitchen consultation, already we said there's no predecessor, it can start on day one. Now I happen to have been given a start date for this project and it's the 1st of March. I'm just gonna bold that so it stands out. So you may not have been given a start date if you haven't, you'd have to work back from a deadline all the way back through and figure out your start date from there. But in this instance, I'm, I've been given 1st of March and I'm going to work with that. So I know that the kitchen consultation can be done on the 1st of March because there's no predecessor and it's going to take two weeks. So that's going to finish on the 14th. There's a dependency here. So I know that this next task is going to have to start the day after the previous task has finished that's in there again it's going to take two weeks pushing that out to the 28th so we use the same process going through looking at the dependencies and working the dates out from there and here it is after I've entered all the start and end dates or start and finish dates. So notice that none of these bold work packages or deliverables have been completed yet. However, now that we have all these lower level dates in, it's much easier to fill the top ones out. So designing the kitchen, when do we start it? Well, it tells us here, the 1st of March. And when is it going to finish? Well, it tells us that right here, the 5th of April. Uh, the same here, this one tells us 1st of March. And it gives us an end date here, the 13th of April. And for the last one, it's got a start date of the 14th and finishes here on the 29th. Now, once again, you might want to format just to make sure all the right things are standing out. So for this whole updating kitchen deliverable, I can now put in the start and the end date. So my start date is here, 1st of March, and my end date is all the way down here, the 29th. And again, I might ensure that that ends up bold so it stands out. So we do the same process going through all of the work breakdown structure with in the orders given. So all of column A, all of column B, then all of column E, all of column F, then all of column C and all of column D. Once you've done all of that, you'll have a start date and you can find out through that work breakdown structure what the end date is. Once you have those things, then you can plot them as a bar chart and make it look more like a Gantt chart. Now I'm just going to hide these two columns here, just so we can see our timeline a little bit more clearly. And so to put in the timeline, we just want to look at when things start and finish. So this is going to start in week one and go to week two. I highlight those and I'm just going to color code so that I can see it as a bar representation. The next two weeks are going to be for the kitchen design. It tells me that. And finalizing the kitchen is going to be done in week five. So this is already showing us the relationships, finish to start relationships between these tasks. When we come down to demolishing the kitchen though, it says it takes a week and we can actually start that on day one. The next task though, installing the kitchen can't be done until the finalization is done. And so that needs to be marked over here.
So immediately we can see that we have some slack or float here. I'm just going to turn that green. So technically this means we could demolish the kitchen in, in week one, week two, three, four or five, but it must be completed in time for the installation to begin. This gives us some scheduling complexity and tells us that demolishing the kitchen is not on the critical path according to this Gantt chart. Testing and inspecting, well, that's going to happen at the end. So let's put that there. And lastly, site cleanup is going to happen here in week eight. We can then go through and look at designing the kitchen and go, OK, well, that goes across that time period. The renovation goes for a little bit longer, remembering we can decide when we demolish according to this Gantt chart. And the finishing activities happen right at the end. And we can also show that updating the kitchen as a deliverable goes across the first eight weeks. So we could do a similar thing for all the subsequent deliverables to show our Gantt chart. I'm just going to unhide those couple of columns. The last thing you may want to do with your Gantt chart is identify your resources. So you could put people in charge of these different uh, activities or deliverables or work packages. You could name them as project manager and roles or as a person's individual name. You might even put a company's uh, name down here against some of the tasks. Recording the resources can help you to identify costs because you can put an hourly rate against these different resources. They could also be equipment and consumables. They could be human or non-human resources. You may also want to use this as a tracker. And so once the project has commenced, let's pretend we're in week three, you might put that this activity is actually 100% complete and you may want to use that to track your progress. I'm going to change that to bright green. So this is now telling me I'm in week three, that work is done and going fine. So that's how you create a Gantt chart. Remembering that we're using a work breakdown structure always as our basis for building this out.